everyone welcome back welcome to my awakening this one is my favorite favorite playlist so far and i love the discussion that we're having because dreaming is another another level of consciousness and that's really a part of neurobiology now and something that we are now discovering which was the ghost in the machine and i absolutely love that i love that perspective because it really enlightens you to think about what is it that uh, we really want to accomplish here in life? And I think focus on dreaming and actually raising your level of consciousness to the world of dreaming is about shifting your focus between the two. And that's ultimate healing because when we have a person, and let's just pass say they suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder and they are stuck in the world of actual trauma, which is actually quite sad because they are unable to actually express what actually has happened through emotional, uh, emotionally understanding because the Western world discredited emotions because they can't prove it, right? Because it's, it's, because it's not measurable. You can't actually measure an emotion in a human being, right? Because it's energy. And the way we capture energy is, um, you know, through vibration. For me personally, because people aren't expanding their, you know, their expanding consciousness through dreaming, they actually get stuck. And it's like, um, you know, being in an arena with really loud music all the time and you can't turn it off because people are un unable to lift their level of consciousness because of all these things that are going on in life. You have, you know, life can be very, very hectic. Life can be very full on for a lot of other you know, for a lot of other different circumstances. So a lot of people don't actually realise in the dynamic of self and how it actually impacts on that level of consciousness and why dreaming is such um, a very sacred, very safe space because you are actually, um, you can actually control your outcomes in, in, the, in the dream. And generally, as, as I've grown and the person that I am now, I'm starting to learn not to be so afraid of it. I think uh, for me, well, the experience of life is very profound for a lot of people. We need to start having a bit of a look at the things that we discredited a long time ago because you can't prove them. And you can't prove the inner world. You can't prove all of that because consciousness is different to each and every one of us. And I like to say the mosaic of tiles that you are given are different to what I've been given. Some people dream in black and white. Some people don't dream at all. Some people may not dream because they're too afraid of it. You know, it's it's very important to actually understand why all of these things happen. And I find, for me, I find it very, very interesting because it allows a certain amount of diversity, you see. And once we celebrate the power of diversity, we realise that none of us are really different as for what we think is different, but we're actually all connected in some way. And that our relevance to how we deliver, how we see things are really, really important. And that's the reasons why the world's just gone a massive explosion of information and a lot of knowledge and a lot of different perspectives. You go on YouTube now and you've got a lot of people who have their fields of expertise. You've got bodybuilders, you have um, nutritionists, you have PTs, you have a lot of different people sharing their experiences and a lot of their knowledge that they've gained through those experiences and wisdom. So I tend to find that finding purpose, if you are able to capture all the different levels of consciousness and experience all the different types of work that you can do, you find that you'll never have a boring life. And you'll find um, that the right people will understand what you are talking about when you go out and you meet them. And that's what in phase one, you, if you go out and take the initiative and take up that responsibility of going, finding these people and saying, you know what, let's get our brains together and brainstorm what we think, you know, a path should look like and whatnot. It's, it's very interesting to see the different types of perspectives you get back. And uh, I think the emotional side of life must be respected. And any healer that discredits that, I mean, be grateful for whatever they've given to you in your life. But emotion is really important. And going through that emotion is very important. I'm not saying that holding on to anger is a really good thing. But what I'm saying is that if you don't learn how to burn anger properly, um, it stays in the body. And anger can do some very, very big damage to the organs itself, especially the liver. Um, and it, it really, really makes a huge big impact. I think it also has a, a lot to do with the kidneys as well and getting rid of waste. 
And uh, because they are all so interconnected, all of them play a massive, massive role. So it's really important in an awakening, you would understand the thought process and the thought that's giving that negative uh, emotion. Not saying that emotions are negative, but it's just firing off. It's neurons collating together and giving a very biochemical reaction. And that's what's giving you the emotion. And those organs are responsible for holding that emotion. So like I said before, if you're suffering from anxiety and that's going to the lungs, that's why a lot of people find it very hard to breathe. A lot of people don't breathe when they're going through anxiety. So it's very important to understand, oh, what's the thought and focus on the breath. And what focus on the breath means is that it'll pick up the thought. And sometimes when we have that thought and we have that um that problem or that issue, whatever's going on for you, I'm not too sure, we would actually burn that. So if I was to say to you, write a letter to yourself, write it down, buy a pot from, you know, Bunnings or whatever, and just put it in the pot and burn it. Because at the end of the day, the thought has no, until such time that you are ready to learn from its purpose, can you really learn to say goodbye from it? It's, it's very hard. It's not actually easy. I can remember running a thought on my mind for a very, very long time. It actually became a nuisance more than um, a helping anymore because it served its purpose. It ran me for a long, long time. It ran that emotion of anger, but till such time that I reached a peaceful place and space in my life, was I able to actually properly get rid of it because there was purpose behind it. Once it reaches its total, total ultimate purpose, can we really realize that? And I think through dreaming, through understanding thought, emotion, physical spirituality, can we really get there? And I think for me, the awakening and my awakening is very, very important for you to understand all of this and the complexity of all of it. It's not just a simple uh, fix overnight. This work is a forever lifetime, however long you, uh, you work on who you are. That's very important. <laughs>